Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I'm a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, I'm interviewing Fran McKay about how you can motivate yourself and how you can persevere through the challenges of studying at university and beyond. So hello, Fran, and welcome to the Success as a Student podcast. Before we begin, would you like to briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Alex. Um, Yes, my name's Fran. I work as an educational research specialist at Nottingham Trent University, and I'm also the creator of Clueless Career. So uh, we talk about all things navigating uh, early careers. I am six years into my postgraduate journey, and I thought it would be a good space to talk about all of the messy things that people don't tend to talk about when it comes to uh, the working world. I love that Instagram page and one thing you do quite openly is you're honest and that's why I thought perfect to interview about motivation, how you stay motivated and how other students can motivate themselves and then also perseverance. So I've just mentioned those two terms, motivation and perseverance. Can you outline to me what they are and what's meant by them? Mm. So I'm really glad that you gave me this topic well in advance of this session, because I must admit, particularly with motivation, it's a term, talking about Instagram, they are terms that you hear thrown about quite often, um, often in the fitness world, actually. So how do you get motivated to, you know, run 20k a week or whatever? And I don't think I'd given a lot of time or energy to try and separate the two or figure out how I can get them to work to my advantage. So you can try and imagine a triangle, pyramid, whatever, and that pyramid is split into three. So those three sections make up the aspects that equal motivation. And perseverance, I am going to discuss perseverance today as making up the bottom bit of that pyramid. Mm -hmm. So in order to remain motivated and to motivate yourself, you need perseverance, which I'll go into the definition of shortly, effort, So you need to give a certain amount of effort to the work that you're doing and direction. So direction being the tip of that pyramid Mm. and direction, meaning, you know, what your overall goal is. um, You kind of kind of want one track in your purpose and you're not just going in loads of different directions constantly. So in my head, that is how motivation and perseverance are related. Um, I see perseverance as more long term. It's continuing to do things no matter what um not in a particular way because I think I put this on Instagram earlier uh, I think it's very easy to think of persevering as doing things one way without flexibility you hate it so much but you're going to carry on doing it yeah it's trying to make it work to the best of your ability and being creative about that. So that flex kind of makes it a bit less daunting for me. Um, And I'd be really interested to know what motivation means to you because I see it as kind of the more glamorous uh, flip side of the coin to perseverance and more short term, like you have motivation bursts. um, You can probably control it a little bit easier than you can perseverance, um, but they're definitely interrelated. So Yes, that's my that's me giving a stab at trying to trying to define and differentiate those two concepts. I think I love it because actually that's really nice because you've got uh, effort. I think is the key for success mm-hmm. generally. I think it's one of the big things. Just trying. I think anyone can be successful if they try. But I do think that perseverance underneath the effort is important. The same with direction as well. I think those three things are definitely components. I've never really thought about it in that triangle aspect. So I think that is a really good way of putting it. To answer your question, though, about what motivation means to me, for me, motivation is doing the things you want to do. But yeah, what do you think about the definition that I've said before we move on to giving some advice and motivation? It's so interesting, isn't it? Because I can, we're obviously both really interested in these concepts. Um, and the fact that you kind of, we stumble when it comes to a simple definition, it shows how much terms like that are 
thrown around and how people are really striving for it. I think it is a really personal, as you said, um, you know, if people have got academic definitions that they use, they like to use for motivation, uh, it's probably because they're coming at it from an academic point of view. I don't think the mo- most of us probably aren't. Um, and I think the concept that I struggle most with is probably long-term mo- motivation because that is really hard to grasp, isn't it? And I think we're going to talk a little bit later about how values and personal values can help with that. So can we underpin motivation with uh, what matters to us and what what drives us and keeps us going? So that would be really interesting to unpick. Definitely. I think uh, if we dive into motivation first and then we go to perseverance second and ways that you can persevere second, mm-hmm. um, what I'd first like to talk about in terms of motivation is about how we motivate ourselves before then going into some tips and advice about how others can then motivate themselves. So first off, Fran, I'd like to ask you, how do you motivate yourself into doing what you do? You do lots of things as well as work. You have an Instagram page, you're active, you go to conferences and so on. So how do you go and motivate yourself? Seems like such a simple question to answer, doesn't it? So how do I motivate myself? Um, So I've got a couple of words written down and the first one's alignment. And alignment has got to do with the direction part of that motivation pyramid that I discussed at the beginning of the episode. So whilst I'm trying to take on um, different responsibilities and get involved in different things and pursue different interests, actually at a strategic level, I try and make sure that they all interconnect in some way. Um, so to kind of label a couple of the things or list a couple of the things that I do. Um, I have recently become a secondary school governor, um, obviously have my job as an educational researcher, um, my Instagram, which is about career development and coaching. Um, to me, all of those things are on the one hand, quite selfishly to improve myself whether that is through doing things like this and really pushing myself to reflect on concepts such as perseverance motivation um and have those reflective opportunities with those like bigger concepts you know great um or to understand what is going on in the policy world so education policy not just in universities in in schools as well so for me, making sure that everything is aligned really helps me to stick to what I've signed up to and commit. The two other things, I've got organisation, which is not very glamorous at all, but it does motivate me. If, I agree. Yeah, if I have got all of my ducks in a row, however you want to define that, uh, for me, it's been able to look at my week and seeing that... I have covered all of the responsibilities that I signed up to, but actually really importantly, I've got that breathing space in there as well. I've got the time to prep. I've got the time to really engage with the things I'm learning. I am motivated to start my week and put my best foot forward. So organization is super important to me. And then I completely lived this third example last week, momentum. So stagnant being stagnant and stagnant can mean being sat on the telly and watching your third episode of RuPaul's Drag Race oh stagnant can mean um only doing the bare minimum at work to make sure that you know your line manager's got everything that they need but not not stretching yourself in any other way I really feel it if I have a bad day And I get in my own head and I can't pick myself up the next day. It is so difficult to motivate myself for the for the rest of the week or however, for however long. So I think momentum has really got a um, a quite an important role for both short and medium term motivation. I actually really agree. I've actually written on my notes that the thing I was going to talk about, if I had to give an example of this, was momentum. I think it's super good. uh, Super good. I think it's very useful. <laughs> is that how good it is? <laughs> Love it. So once you've got momentum and you've started something, it can be very easy to continue. And often I find essay writing to be exactly like that. Yeah. I struggle to start. And once you've started and you know where you're going and you know what your next action is, it all ticks along a lot easier. And it's very easy to motivate yourself by comparison to when you are looking up at this ma- mountain of a hill to climb and think, oh, that's huge. 
Absolutely. I think discomfort, which again is something that I found really interesting exploring through this, has got a large part to play as well. Because ultimately, as humans, you know, in terms of evolutionary speaking, we are going to be so much more inclined to sit and do little and not use the the bandwidth that it takes to write the essay, you know, not go on that run so your five, 5K out of your 10K goal for the week is done. Um, it's really easy to slip into doing the easier thing. And I think motivation actually, you know, so much easier said than done again, but um, you've got to maintain that level of uh, pushing yourself just to keep yourself going. Hmm. And once you've started doing that, it gets easier, but you've got to start somewhere. And yeah. even when you started, you think you've then got to continue. And I guess that's where perseverance can come in, is yeah. continuing and learning to continue. But I think motivation is a battle. And against you wanting to be comfortable versus that discomfort. I don't know if you'd agree mm-hmm. with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, completely. It is completely that, isn't it? Um, I'd be interested, Alex, when you're writing your, your essays or revising for your exams, after a while of you're in that habit of writing of exploring and pushing yourself you kind of find that sweet spot where actually you're enjoying you're enjoying yourself for lack of a best word I mean it's not Disneyland but it's something (laughs) um and you're quite proud of yourself and you know you feel that you you feel like a researcher right you're like Mm -hmm. really you feel like you're contributing these amazing ideas and that is where motivation's at its peak because it feeds into um, it kind of begets more motivation, doesn't it? So, yeah, I think you're completely right. Yeah, I had a full day on Saturday, which is two days ago from now, reading, and I made lots of progress, and that just gave me such yeah. a good feeling that then the yeah. next day I just wanted to do more mm-hmm. and keep myself being proud. Whereas sometimes when you haven't motivated yourself, you often feel guilty, and sometimes that guilt can lead to more guilt and not doing and so on and pushing back things back, and yeah. that's how I feel when I'm battling. So it's definitely a two-way battle, and something that I think is important from my perspective as someone who's seen as someone who's motivated I struggle and I find it a battle and I find yeah. it difficult it's very easy to not do things and then to slip and keep not doing them mm-hmm. um, but it's just about that perseverance to, to notice that and then go okay this is how I'm going to change it yeah but we, we don't see that in other people do no. we you know, as you say if people's perspective of you as someone who is studying working doing these extra things because you're interested um you can you can feel very alone when you are as I say three four hours into your Netflix binge and your (laughs) literature review is five percent done you think that you're the only one that's in that situation but it's it's not the case people just don't advertise it as much as their success is do they no people don't and it's it happens even with successful people uh and I often feel like a fraud for it when I do it. So I've had days and even sometimes a week where I've not done my work for my master's that week. And I've just, in my head, the back of my mind said, don't turn up to the class. Don't go to the class, you'll embarrass yourself. But actually, when I've gone to that class, even if I've not done as much work as I wanted to do, that stopped me from getting further behind. And right. then I, and that's, that's the positive action that then can help me reform and get back to where I want to be with motivation. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I definitely have struggles in times when I don't motivate myself as much as I want to. And I'm very harsh on myself for doing that. And other people don't see that. And I'm, I can guarantee you, if you feel that if you procrastinated and not done your assignment for a few hours, you're probably not the only one. But the key thing from my perspective is, if you've done that, what can you do to turn that around and to build that momentum back up and right. to not be stagnant, as you were saying earlier, Fran? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, um, again, I keep going to kind of inst- back to Instagram culture. I think whilst so Instagram as it exists now didn't really exist when I was a student in my undergrad. And I think I, I feel quite lucky in that respect mm. because there is a lot of talk of the grind, working until you can't work anymore, you know, working 100% all the time. And um, again, it's that it's that balance between working sustainably and and continuously, but not falling victim to the grind and things feeling unnatural. And, you know, you're not listening to what your body's saying when you need to take a break and you need to go on a walk, you need distracting. 
Um, so yeah, ab- absolutely. I think it, you know, it's it's very personal, but I think sustainable motivation. Um, you need to listen to yourself as much as you need to keep on the ball, really. So just to summarise what you said so far, then you talked about sustainable mm-hmm. motivation, not or potentially not burning yourself out by mm-hmm. by doing too much and feeling like you're part of this grind culture. You've also got um, your th- your three different tips you gave before, so making sure you align the activities that you do together to see if they can benefit each other. Um, I try to do that where possible. It's not always possible to do that, but if you can do, amazing. Mm-hmm. Then your second piece of advice was organisation. 100% mm-hmm. something I do, and we talk about how organisation can help you to avoid stress and can help your well-being and whilst also helping your motivation by giving you the, th- the things and the actions to do. Uh, and the third aspect that you mentioned then was momentum and not staying cycling and keeping going, which we've talked about in depth. So yeah, mm-hmm. I think those are some really good tips for motivation. I have a question for you, which is a personal mm-hmm. question, but um, something which I struggle to motivate myself to do is to put time into my calendar for things that help me in the future. Often when I think about motivation, I often do short-term things. So often I might miss long-term development. So have you got any advice for how I can motivate myself to develop my career whilst also getting through the needs of my everyday week? It's a really good question. So I was finding that for all of my talk about organisation and doing all these wonderful things and juggling all these responsibilities... I would wake up some days and just feel like I needed 10 of me to be doing everything at once. So I sat down with my Google calendar and I looked at the next three months and I put in time, uh, not weekly. um, It could be fortnightly. um, I've got some things like uh, evaluating how a short course is going, for example, that I've put in for a date in a month's time. So that will just crop up in a month's time. And I can think, you know, um, the, the work that I've done this course so far, how's it going? How's my revision technique? Is it working for me? So I suppose that's the technique of just taking, taking some ring fence, fence time to ring fence time in the future, basically. Mm. Um, and all of that, I think that's part of the productivity ninjas strategy as well all of these tasks that might be in your brain and taking up space in your brain and using the tools that we've got to basically just get them on the page splurge them so that it's not taking up any room um so yes the tip is i would say set aside an hour an hour and a half have a calendar tool that you're comfortable using and look at the next three months and try and space out the responsibilities that, that you want to spend time doing i guess the thing is is then stick to it i know um after my initial motivation i did something like that last year i was developing my editing skills um, to help mm-hmm. make these podcasts and i always found later down the line i just had that time and i was like ah. Eh. I've got something busy this week. And then the next week, I had something pressing come up. So I was like, ah, something pressing has come up. And then I looked back and I'd realised six weeks in a row had passed. And yeah. I had missed that time every single week because something had come up. Mm. So what would your advice for that, if you have any advice for that? So I think the first thing I would say is don't be harsh on yourself. Because the fact that you've got these tasks that are cropping up, that are unplanned for means that you're in demand and your time's in demand and that's good and you've got people around you that want your opinion that's good um so so the question that I would ask would be going back to the pyramid uh trying to think about the your priorities in terms of direction and where you want to be the things that are cropping up that you're not managing to plan for are they going to give you more kind of capital experience whatever you need um to be able to get to where you want to be you know whether that's academically whether that's in your career so i think you know evaluating reevaluating your priorities regularly is no bad thing particularly when you're still at university and a couple of years out of university like things are not stagnant hmm. um and just a very kind of brief anecdote then when i started doing um this planning of time with my google calendar this is how much of a planner I'm trying to be. I put aside time in my calendar next month to try and evaluate how efficient the Google calendar had been. It's worth doing. So it is. And I, I mean, I'm not there yet. So it'll be, that's kind of, I think it's in June. 
And I can completely relate to the fact that um, there's a couple of things in there, like uh, set aside time to scope what's happening in the higher education sector. So what other pieces of work are universities working on that might be beneficial to my work? You know, it's not it's never going to be urgent enough for me to decline a meeting or if I'm not feeling great that day, you know, to want to. I don't know, really sit, sit there and do the level of investigation that's probably needed to do the job well. But it's important for the long term, for that long term development. You know, I want to be someone who's seen as evidence informed and you know, knows what's going on, can integrate that into my own work. I think it's partly having a conversation with yourself around that. Mm. But on the other hand, balancing that with not being too harsh on yourself, because these things happen, particularly in later university years and not long after coming out of university. So I guess the first step to that is consider where you might want to be, what types of things mm-hmm. you want to be developing, and then ring fence, so put protected time into your calendar to do it, yeah. and to try to stick to that. And I guess then evaluate how that process is going and reflect on that and think, is this working? Am I doing it? If not, what can I do to make it work? Am I going to protect yeah. it? Am I going to move it to another day when it's quieter, for example? And yeah, really thinking about it and making sure that if you want to use that time that way, then do it. I guess that's yeah. good advice. Mm-hmm. I'm actually doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is set in stone. And the more it's so easy to pressure yourself when you're setting aside, you know, your hour to to create this beautiful Google calendar, and you say, right, this is it. I'm going to be the best version of myself from now on. I'm never going to be demotivated again. Um, it's just not. It, it's no, it's no. not the best thing. No, it's not the best thing, and it's really frustrating to admit that. Um, but nothing's perfect in in that respect. So yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. You you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to get it right. There are going to be bad days where you aren't motivated, and they are a struggle. So before we go on to perseverance, I just like to make I just like to highlight my second piece of advice that I would give for motivation, which is just to links into that direction point, which I think is so essential, which is to know what your next steps are. If you don't know what you're doing, it can be so hard to get things done. And once you know what you're doing, that's when you can start building momentum. But if you don't, if you don't have that direction, then it's difficult. Let's move on to perseverance. So perseverance is, as you said, is one of the foundation pillars of motivation. Mm-hmm. So what we're going to talk about first is day-to-day perseverance, how you can persevere on a day-to-day journey of your life and career. And then we'll talk about long-term perseverance. So Fam, would you like to talk to me about perseverance on a day-to-day basis? Hmm, what a topic. That's just the hugest topic ever, isn't it? I know. <laughs> perseverance on a day-to-day basis. Um, so I, I guess I'll start with the fact that I find the quote or kind of the concept of just do it. I wrote about this on Instagram today. I find that so unhelpful. Um, you know, there are, I'm sure there are people in certain situations with certain tasks that they can just do it and get it over and done with. It's always one person that manages to write an essay in an hour and it's great. Uh, that's, that's a conversation for another day. I think perseverance day to day is a lot about self acceptance. And we've already talked about flexibility, but I think there's a lot to be said about flexibility and finding that sustainable behavior for you. Mm. Um, and that's been tested whilst we've been at home, we've been working from home because our day to day routines have been completely uprooted and, um, my perseverance has for sure been tested being in my flat 24 seven. Luckily we're getting to, to leave a little bit more now. Um, but I've, fa- I've found ways around that. And a lot of that has been about self-acceptance. And it's been about listening to myself when I need to go on a walk. Um, and it changes day to day. So I really have struggled to nail down a routine. Um, but ultimately, it comes back to being kind to yourself and accepting that we're not perfect beings. And most tasks that we work on, both in university and post-university, are hard. And we've got to go with the flux of that and allow flexibility to get to allow ourselves to get through them I think I think that flexibility is very crucial I always think about perseverance is when motivation is struggling how do we keep doing the things that we need to do so often we have short-term motivation it's great 
we have a two-week period where we're like, yeah, I'm going to redefine the world, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and then it struggles. So then how after you've gone through the struggle, how do you then get back up again? That's what I think a lot about perseverance. When it starts mm-hmm. getting tough to keep that going or the momentum starts dying down, how do you keep going? So mm-hmm. have you got any tips and advice for how students any, or anyone listening to this can persevere? Yeah, it's, uh, it's it's so situational and so personal. If I can use an example. So I did my master's about two years ago now, which is mad. Um, and I wrote a thesis, which I really enjoyed doing. It tested me in a lot of ways. And I was, I've never felt this way about a piece of work before. I was so desperate to get it out into the world. I wasn't even worried about, you know, people critiquing it and the potential negative um, reviews or commentaries that I had back. I just wanted that piece to exist in the world outside of my, dis- outside of my supervisors or walls. And coming to now, uh, at this point in time, I have tried twice and I'm on my third attempt to get this research published and I've thought about giving up so many times and in that situation what has helped me to keep at it is trying to remember what the goal of getting it out there is and it continues to be the fact that I strongly believe that I've got something important to say on this topic, as should anyone that's written a dissertation. I believe we put so much unique thought and exploration into it. I would, you know, I'd recommend and encourage anyone to try and get things published. Um, but also this a bit of humility. Uh, perseverance has got a lot to do and has got very strong links with failure and um I see myself as a perfectionist and I really struggle to do things that I'm not great at. Humility is so important. Um, When I received feedback from the journal reviewer, the first and second time round, I first, the first time round, I gave myself a week to digest all of the reviewer's comments and not take them as personal criticism and realise that this person reads, you know, maybe 10 articles a day they don't know me uh like going through journal drafts quickly etc cetera, etc cetera. the second time around it probably took me more like three or four days and I hated the world a little bit less um and I think I'm improving with every rejection because I am admitting to myself that a things are difficult things are hard we've already touched on that um even if you're really good at something, things are very, very difficult, particularly getting published. And I am learning that it's okay not to be great the first time around at everything. And it has helped me in acceptance of that to persevere. Um, So in a way, persevering becomes easier the more you fail, even if it doesn't feel that way the first you know, every time that you get rejected, it is it is a muscle that you kind of you flex and you get better at being in that uncomfortable position. I think mm. you've linked to quite a few things that we talked about in the series so far. Uh, failure as something we dedicated an entire episode to, and I always get like a stabbing in the chest pain when I, I when I open something up and I'm hoping that they've accepted oh, yeah. it and they've not. And you get used to that, I guess, the more it happens. But failing isn't a bad thing, as we've mentioned already. It's not. Mm-hmm. And uh, even when you get that bad feedback, you've still then got to use it. And I guess that's the way you persevere, is when you choose to use that feedback to For help sure. you the next time and to carry on and to decide to carry on. Um, but yeah, I, I, I can definitely see that uh, the links to perseverance and failure. Because uh, cause perseverance is often when challenge occurs and often failing is a big challenge. And that failure can be personal to you. That that could be the failure of you not doing your work one night. It could be your failure if you've lost the momentum and so on. It could be because mm-hmm. you've been rejected, which is the most obvious type of failure. So I guess it's persevering through different types of failure. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that failure in mind, I'm just wondering if you have any views, as you mentioned earlier, about how values can help with that perseverance. It's a really interesting concept, values, because again it's or when I've been in a situation low mood not being able to motivate myself and I try and get myself out of that I've never really thought you know what are my values and how can I 
use them or plug into them to help me to realize that everything's okay that this this discomfort is worth it to help me to progress um using the example of of the kind of failure to get published my values linking to the goals and why I so badly want that to happen my work was linked to people's experiences in their workplace and I did interviews around uh, people that work in universities and how they get impacted by policy and it was quite emotive and I think it's really important that policymakers in this example realize the impact of what they're doing on people you know the workforce and that is completely linked to my values because I like to think of you know maybe the underdog is not the right way to see it but I care about people I think that everything that we do you know strategically needs to be linked to people management so my my values there are completely driving um that urge to wake up at 7 a.m and do two hours working on my journal article before work Mm -hmm. even if I'm hating every minute of it you really need to dig deep in those moments because sometimes a cup of coffee is not going to hack it so yes values whilst I might not have realized it previously if you can sit and reflect on why you want something to happen and why that means something to you and you can try and remind yourself of that when things aren't going great is a really valuable um it's a very valuable tool to have in your toolkit yeah so I guess it's just about working out what your values are work out why you're doing what you're doing and why you want this thing to carry on that's all about direction which is the peak of that pyramid and one down from direction is effort so if you've got the the direction which is linked to your values it allows you to again dig deep and try and find that effort whether that's being sat in a library for six hours or waking up early to get something done it's really really valuable and I think that why I mean it's that summarizes it brilliantly when you were saying earlier Alex about um having your your calendar in front of you having planned ahead all the best intentions everything's got its time but then things come in that uh, that don't allow you to do what you had planned that's where the evaluation is super important and not being afraid to reevaluate and ask yourself why did I want to ring fence time for this is it worth it if it's stressing me out and I've got competing priorities the why is um yeah super important at all times i think yeah i i agree yeah work out what your why is so we've talked already about persevering through failure and challenge but something mm-hmm. i'd like to talk about now is persevering after just one bad day so you've got, you've got momentum you've got a streak going and you, you you've been productive as you want to do but you've had a bad day you've not been productive things haven't gone well you may not have done any work you may have been distracted on your netflix binge or whatever it is that's taken you away from what you want to do what do you do then and how do you persevere to get back on track so i'm wondering fran have you got any advice for that yes and no (laughs) yes um i can tell you what i have done in the past that's worked Mm. and i don't know whether you've come across um cbt so cognitive behavior therapy so it is a version of talking therapies something that i'm really interested in um i bought a book on cbt not that long ago and it speaks so much about things like perseverance and finding your why and being mindful in situations not being too harsh on yourself so if you've had a bad day um a bad day for me normally starts with i'm tired because i haven't slept particularly well And I go straight from bed to sofa and it starts off with me just wanting to check the headlines of the day. And then I'm on Netflix and then Netflix is just this expansive library of fun and I don't have to do much Mm. to keep entertained. So let's stick with just two, two things that I would do. Firstly, try and avoid screens. And that is, you know, Everyone shouts that from the rooftops, but it's very much easier said than done. Um, Put your phone on airplane mode. It might feel really unnatural because when we're tired, actually much like Netflix, phones, Instagram, TikTok, 
whatever you're using, it, it does the work for you. All you have to do is look at it. And I've got propensity to rely on that when I am when I'm tired and not having a good day, but it's just a vicious circle. Yeah. Um so avoid screens and then the second thing would be to not just assume that everything you do that day is going to be a complete waste of time. So I've had days where I've been really groggy and sluggish and they are probably not the days where I'm going to be writing a Nobel Prize winning article or the day in fact that I will get published but it may be the day actually that I look through my Google calendar for the next couple of months and I try and kind of sift through the responsibilities that are currently in my armory and I think do you know what? Let's have a bit of a reevaluation of what I'm willing to give my time to, the headspace that I've got, which is limited, what is worth and what my priorities are at this time. And I have done that in the past. It's just been about realizing what you might not be able to do because you're not having the best day and you're feeling, you know, a bit under the weather, not great about yourself and trying to think about how you can add value to your week in other ways. Um, and I think once you're open minded about that and realize that the whole day isn't written off, you can do some quite creative and wonderful things with that. And um, it's just realizing that it's that it's possible and not losing faith too early on, I think. Yeah, I, I love that piece of advice. It's a piece of advice I often give to my partner. I just say the, the day isn't over. What do you mean it's a bad day? It's a bad few hours so far, maybe. Yeah. And I think that's really helped me. Yeah, that's really good to hear, Alex. I have one last question to ask, uh, and that is the question I ask to every single person who comes on this podcast, and that is, what advice do you have for someone who wants to be successful? Mm. <laughs> it's a very good question, and I, I'm, um, I'll have to listen to the other podcast episodes to hear what your other guests have said, Alex, but um, I have written down a couple of things, and I stick to them, even though, as most of the stuff that we've spoken about today is easier said than done. I think the first is a reminder that the time that we have, that you have, is far longer than it feels. And whilst our, we've talked a lot about priorities and we've got to ring fence and protect our time, if actually you fall into the headspace and you really manage to develop that headspace, that you have got time to do things that you enjoy and that help you in the long term and that help you develop, you really build that sustainable day to day when I'm having not such a great day I find myself uh, panicking and becoming quite frantic and not engaging with things in a quality way and um, they are not you know on the whole they are not days that help me towards my long-term goals the ones where I realize that I've got the whole day ahead of me I'm going to have blips but you know persevering continuing to you know have a positive mindset um time is our friend basically is the first thing I would say um and the second one is about resilience and this is for students that are listening to this that have had the really difficult job of being students during the pandemic you are more resilient than you feel and you are more resilient than you know and when I think back to being a student and the late nights the lack of routine um, just the amount of stuff that you've got to learn, both in terms of your yourself and your personal development, but also just like pure academic content. You're doing this amazing thing. And you will, if you if you believe in yourself and you've got, you know, the confidence that you've managed to show in just continuing to be a student in this difficult time, you will find yourself with an array of amazing opportunities in front of you and try not to put that pressure on because a lot of things do come naturally if you're in the right headspace and you believe in yourself so yeah I think my two pieces of advice would be time is your friend and time not to t try not to fret because um there's lots of time in the day to do what you need to do yeah. and uh believe believe in yourself because you're more, more resilient than you know two excellent pieces of advice and just to touch on the first one when I started, I had no idea how much time there was to do just not just your course, but to do other things that will help you in your career, help you in your personal development and so on. 
and I, I think that's a really, really good piece of advice. Yeah. And one thing that we haven't had time to talk about, and you know, I'm sure those that are listening know something or another about mindfulness. So mindfulness fits fits in perfectly to both of those tips, really. Um I never used to give much time to mindfulness and meditation as an A-level student. The day before my final history exam, I was so panicked. I'll never forget. I'll never forget this. I was so panicked. I could not remember anything. And this is, I mean, I had timelines all over my wall at my, my room at home. I'd learned about the Cold War for two years and I couldn't tell you kind of the day you know the sort of year that it began even roughly and my mum gave me this meditation tape which was breathing exercises and I did it for like 15 minutes and the first 10 minutes I was thinking this is rubbish I'm going to fail um why am I spending 10 minutes doing this when I could be learning you know remembering when the Cuban missile crisis was and I remember that day so starkly it was 2011 so we're talking a long time ago now And I did breathing exercises for the first time. And I don't really do breathing exercises regularly. But that concept of stopping and realizing that 10 minutes in the grand scheme of things to slow yourself down is nothing Mm -hmm. and can make the world of difference. That concept has stuck with me. So, yeah, if I can impart any sort of advice, it would be, you know, even if you're not um, willing to give time to do a headspace every day, for example, um, really try and find a new way of taking a step back so you don't get ahead of yourself give your time it's yourself time to reflect and uh, refresh thank you so much for your time Fran I really appreciate everything that you've given and said in this podcast and thanks also for your honesty as well thanks Alec thanks again to Fran for her insight I think Fran's payment for connecting motivation and perseverance together was really useful just as a refresher Fran explained that motivation is a pyramid that's split into three. Fran identified that at the bottom, there is perseverance, and that in order to be motivated, you need to make sure that you persevere. The second element of this is effort, and you need to make sure that you add in the effort that is required. And the final part, which is essential, is direction. That is the first thing that I wanted to pick out of this episode. The second thing that I wanted to highlight is Fran's tips for being motivated. Fran outlined the importance of gaining momentum, staying organised and aligning what you do together as ways of being motivated. I think these three are amazing tips that you should try and keep in mind for going forward in the future. In the final part of this episode, we discussed perseverance. Fran suggested that identifying your why and working out what your values are will help you when you need to dig deep and will help you to keep going when needed. On an aside, Fran runs the amazing Clues Careers Instagram page. This page posts regular content about how you can find your feet in the future, and I would highly recommend it. If you'd like to follow this page, then the details are in the description of the YouTube version of this podcast on the Derby Uni Library YouTube channel. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio of this episode. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar, Tim Zalstra and Naomi Bowers Joseph for giving feedback for this episode and the series on the whole. Thank you very much for listening.